Hello everyone and welcome to the Hadron Collider. In a very special episode, I'm going to explain the theory of everything. So why is the theory of everything important? Well, it's very important. It's uh, way more important than say Kim Kardashian's butt. And a lot of people spend hours and hours trawling the internet for information regarding her um, derriere. So if you can spend five to six minutes understanding exactly the force that brings you into existence, I think that um, it'll be time well served. So I'm about to start um, to give you a bit of a background on particle physics and how we came uh, with the standard model and how we came about it. So um, in about the 1960s, um, theorists came up with what was called the standard model and um, it was the particle model, the subatomic particle model. And um, it was a great model, but it was missing something. And basically to summarize, it was missing mass. So weight, the things that made things solid. They had all the particles, they sort of understood theoretically how they would interplay and how they'd observe, but they had no mass. So a very smart man um, came up with a thing called the Higgs field, named after his, um, himself. And the Higgs field was a way that uh, particles could interact and um, gain mass. And by inventing, because it was invented, um, this Higgs particle, Higgs field, uh, we're able to give mass to particles and understand the universe extremely well. Now, this theoretical model served us very well and helped us understand the universe. Now, we have two types of um, particle physicists. We have theoretical particle physicists. They sit in offices. Maybe they spend some time in universities using high-end maths to try and predict how things would work. Then their models are taken by experimental scientists or particle physicists who then devise ingenious experiments trying to prove the theoretical particle physicists wrong or right. Now the most exciting thing I believe in science ever is what's called the Large Hadron Collider. It's the world's biggest scientific experiment. It's 27 kilometers large and it's in Geneva. Uh, it actually um, also moves into France. It's such a large experiment. It's um, in France and it also um, runs through Geneva. So what that does very simply is it shoots two particles at each other at 99.999% uh, the speed of light. And once they hit, it explodes and we look for what's inside of it. And um, what we're really looking for is to prove that there is a Higgs particle. Now that's being dubbed the God particle. And it's a really, it's a funny term, but it's a good term because it's the particle that really gives mass, it gives life, it gives reality to our understanding of the universe. So to give you a bit of a background on what we're looking for and what we came up with and what the theory the standard model um, uh, produced, I've got a, a few diagrams for you. So what we have here is what's called the standard model. The theory of everything, the standard model. And we have what's called quarks and leptons that sit around here and you have up and down quarks which are the most famous and you have quite a few um, different quarks and leptons. That sits around this area here and then we have what's called the force carriers. And these force carriers um, are part of our standard model that helps us understand the universe. But what we're missing is, we're missing God. The God particle or the Higgs particle. Now that particle has never been found and it's important that it's found because if it's not found, we were wrong about all of this for a long time and particle physics needs to start again. People have spent their entire lives, literally their entire lives working on this model, and if we can't find the Higgs or the God particle, we've been wrong this entire time, and that'd be devastating to imagine um, for those um, particle physicists. So that's, that's really what the uh, Large Hadron Collider, that 27 kilometer largest experiment um, in the history of mankind, is looking for. It's really looking for this particle, and if it finds it, we're in luck. Now, the um, Large Hadron Collider has been in operation for a little while and we've got some amazing data. Now, before I get into the data and what it means is, this standard model developed two popular theories. One is called supersymmetry and one is called many universes. Now, supersymmetry I really like. It's a really great way of explaining how the universe works. It basically says there's an opposite for every 
every model we create. There's something here and there's something there. There's balance, there's beautiful balance in the universe. There's symmetry, every particle has a invisible other particle that keeps it in check. Um, then we have a theory I don't like because it really undermines everything about our existence, which is the second major theory of particle physics, which is called the many universes theory. Now this is a spooky theory that's gained a lot of attention in the last 20 years that basically says there are countless universes. In fact, there are more universes, there's an infinite level of universes. So while we sit in our universe and we sit here thinking, there's hundreds of trillions of trillions of billions of Googleplexes of other universes out there that exist at the same time. Now this is a devastating theory because it means we'll never understand reality because we'll only ever understand our universe's reality because there's no way for us ever to experiment or predict what happens in another universe. Now, we have things like the universal constant that makes me believe that um, there is a force, there's a guiding principle of you know something that brings nothingness and somethingness into being. And if the many universes theory is correct, um, I'm in a little bit of trouble because it really um, fundamentally changes my belief in how um, creation has happened. I would like supersymmetry to be right. Now the beauty of the Large Hadron Collider is that after numerous experiments, and millions of you know gigs of data being looked at, it's found the Higgs, the God particle, which was really important. Now, what's really important about the um, God particle though is its weight. So weight is measured as GeV, and these two theories rely on a, the the weight. It just relies on the weight of the um, the God particle. Now, for supersymmetry to be right. right 110 GeV needs to be the weight of the God particle. For the many universes theory to be right, theorists say that 145 GeV should be the weight of the God particle. Now, it's very scary because the data's in, and if supersymmetry is right, we'll weigh the Higgs, the God particle, and we'll get 110. If the many universes theory is right, we we'll get 145. So a lot of scientists waited with bated breath to get this information, and it's fundamental to our entire existence. So the number came in, and the magic number, I guess the thing that helps us understand the entire theory of how our universe exists, how you exist, how you came into being, why you're in being, how you carry force and mass, and why you can even observe the known universe, came in at 126 GeV. So, supersymmetry, it wasn't the right weight. So, sorry, many universes wasn't right, or nor was it with supersymmetry was the right, right weight. It's a incredible finding. It basically says, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know how the universe really works. We're getting closer because we now know the weight of the God particle. We know that we've got 126 GeV. But supersymmetry doesn't fit, and neither does the many universe theory. So we need to go back to the drawing board. It's important that we know this, and it can seem a little bit depressing that we've worked so hard to know so little, but we're now on the doorstep of finding out the truth, which is what we're really chasing. The thing I love about this is that my belief in our consciousness creating the universe and us not really ever wanting to understand the mysteries of the universe, because it might spoil the, um, the fun, made me really laugh when this result came out because we're working so hard to understand the universe, we're patting ourselves on the back and high-fiving ourselves all the time and we've got geniuses working their entire lives to say 110 or 145 and the data comes back and the universe smacks us in the face and says 126 is the God particle. So we're not ready to throw out the standard model, the standard model still works very nicely at 126 with the quarks and the leptons and the force carriers. but we need to do a lot more work to understand the theory of everything. We're almost there, but there's still mystery. And I guess that's the beauty of uh, quantum mechanics and particle physics, is that there's a lot of mystery, a lot of beautiful mystery that humans can continue to find. Now, I'm still hoping that there's a theory that explains this. This theory over here, I really hope gets disproved because we'll never understand the underlying nature of reality outside of our universe, if this is true. If this is true, it's pretty cool. Reminds me how the universe works, beautiful symmetry and, um, and beauty. Or, more likely than not, there's something super sexy, unbelievable and mind-blowing with the 126 GeV weight of the God particle. So, 
that's how the universe works. These are the things that I think we should learn in kindergarten before we learn about cracking ducks because this is what makes you up. This is why we're here today. We've got force carriers, we've got quarks and leptons at the subatomic level. We have the God particle that gives weight, gives chunkiness, gives mass, gives meaning to all this, this model. We have really intelligent heroes of um, science in both theoretical and experimental physics. And then we have the magic number. And right now, 126 GeV should be a number that everyone knows and everyone is desperate to understand and find out what it really means to us in the theory of the universe. So thank you for listening. Thank you for um, sitting down and listening to the theory of everything. I really appreciate um, the viewers and the comments and everything that um, you provide. And I look forward to giving you more information about um, what 126 GeV really means and gives us an insight into, um, into God. So thank you very much. Goodbye.